Well, well, well. Looks like Theresa May not, after all. The Prime Minister, once considered as a possible new Iron Lady, has turned out to be made of tin instead. The House of Commons was supposed to vote on the final Brexit deal this week, but Mrs. May has pushed the vote on the deal back unilaterally so that she can negotiate some more with the EU. She got hammered during the Prime Minister's questions on the 12th of December, barely survived a confidence vote, was found in contempt of Parliament, and announced that she would not lead the Tories into the next general election. Meanwhile, the representatives from the EU in the Brexit negotiations snubbed her proposed changes this week. Even Jeremy, hey chips are tasty, Corbin looks more prepared than she does. If this Brexit deal didn't have any impact on America, then I probably wouldn't have much to say. But it does. Every time that the Prime Minister makes another mistake, uncertainty scares investors out of the global markets, including the US markets, and the indices drop again. Looks like we have something to talk about. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. Like I said before in my Brexit video, I'm not from the UK, and when it comes to politics, I really know more about America than Great Britain. Still, this situation seems to be easily understood, so I'm going to revisit Brexit. Theresa May has had two years to craft a Brexit deal. All that she had to do was to remember what the voters said during the referendum, and that the balance of both trade and payments to the EU gives the UK a great position from which to negotiate. The EU needs the UK's financial support. The EU needs access to resources in the United Kingdom, especially in her waters. The EU, especially Germany, needs access to the UK's markets to maintain their trade surpluses. The EU also needs for the UK to keep taking at least some of the refugees flooding into Europe from other nations. With all of these things that the EU needs from the UK, they should have been more than willing to negotiate to keep the barriers down. Instead, they played hardball in order to stir up resentment for Brexit and kept hinting that the UK could rescind their Article 15 letter to feed Remain sentiments. The UK should have been dictating terms to the EU regarding the post-Brexit relationship, not the other way around. I've said before that President Trump would have made good deals with the UK to boost their economic position and strengthen their hand, if only to give American companies a fighting chance to pick up some of the market currently serviced by Germany. Instead, Mrs. May ignored political reality, spent more time condemning Trump than negotiating a deal with him, and approached the Brexit negotiations with an almost timid tone. Please, Mr. Juncker, may we have some of our sovereignty back if we leave most of the sweetheart deals alone? We need the EU more than we need the US. Really? Let's take a look at the numbers again. The United States has bought $4.6 billion more than it sold in the UK so far this year, helping to offset the $84.25 billion trade deficit that the UK has with the rest of the EU. The US may be the single biggest country with which the UK does business, but the collective business deals done with the EU do represent a larger market for the UK. The trouble is that the biggest market for the UK is pulling tens of billions of British pounds out of the United Kingdom, and Her Majesty's government is paying 19 billion pounds each year for the privilege. Not to mention that the UK has to share fishing quotas in their own waters with other nations, who then sell some of their catch back to the UK. Nothing like buying your own fish from foreign fishermen when your fishing industry is under serious stress from reduced quotas to prevent overfishing, right? The UK's quarterly GDP growth has rarely gone over 2% in the last couple of decades. In fact, the last time that the UK experienced truly robust growth of over 5% per quarter was back when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister. The absolute best way to make Jeremy Corbyn have to shut up and sit down is to push hard to regain sovereignty over your own markets and make great trade deals. But is that what Theresa is doing? 
Um, no. Just no. Like I said, Mrs. May is insulting and dismissive of the President of the United States. She acts as if the EU will continue to be the only market that the UK needs to worry about for years to come. I can see why, given the balance of trade for the UK, she would come to that conclusion. But she has tunnel vision. When she dismisses the brinksmanship of Trump's negotiations with China, she ignores the fact that China needs for the US to keep buying their products. She also ignores the fact that the U.S. has huge surpluses of key commodities like soybeans that the People's Republic cannot obtain in sufficient quantities elsewhere. That's why China is backpedaling from their hardline positions of earlier this year. 2018 may have been a rough year for the U.S. economy, but it keeps on growing at a more robust rate than that of the U.K., and the U.S. by itself represents as much market as the much more populous China and, in fact, the EU. If deals are made to absorb the shock of lost market potential in the EU, then the UK comes out of Brexit in a stronger position, politically and economically. With plenty of GDP growth to support increased funding of emergency services, the NHS, and the schools in the UK, the biggest levers, other than Brexit, that Corbyn and Labour used to try to pry the government out of the hands of the Tories. It's good that Theresa May will resign in favour of another member after Brexit is concluded. The vote on the deal looks to accelerate her plans for leading 10 Downing Street, to be honest, and I'm starting to wish that she would hurry up and hand the reins over to someone else. I'm tired of watching the global markets dither about investments and fluctuate based on her mishandling of this deal. Every time it happens, she hits the retirement portfolios of hundreds of millions of people and leaves people wondering if they have to work another five years past retirement age to ensure that they can afford to stop working. Of course the EU is resisting the Brexit deal. It isn't going to help them to create a United States of Europe. It will land a body blow on their plans to create an army of Europe. It will make absorbing Africa into the EU much more difficult, if not impossible. Yeah, you heard me right. The EU has been looking at expanding membership outside of Europe since at least 2002, and North Africa is one of their targets. Louis Michel, MEP and chair of the European Parliament's delegation to the ACP-EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly, wrote an opinion piece which published on the 21st in which he suggested extending the EU free trade zone to encompass all of Africa, and the future commission president claimed this week that uniting Africa with Europe was, quote, a matter of destiny, unquote. Hey Europe, you already tried imperialism in Africa. It was part of what prompted two world wars, remember? There are better ways to help African nations build better, more successful societies than annexation. This external investment in development and infrastructure, which is exactly what China is doing and why you are so keen to absorb dozens of nations into the EU. Only then can you force the second largest sovereign economy in the world to stay out of Africa, about which your unenlightened position is still quite jingoist, isn't it? The single best way to slam the door shut on the European Union's imperialism is to stand up to them and to tell them that their castle is built on sand and the tide is rolling in. If the EU thinks that the UK cannot leave, then to me that's all the more reason that London should vote out a hard Brexit and give the other members of the European Union a good reason to rethink their own membership. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlist. Check out these channels I have subscribed to for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell. 